sisters and brothers. In a place like this, every day people are coming in from the street. They come in bringing their stories. They come in carrying their life, almost as if it, almost as if it weren't something they want to get too close to but with the way things are turning out. Or they come in carrying their life as if it were a bird in the hand, a broken wing, trembling. Or they come in carrying their life all defiant, as if it were on the end of a finger, maybe this finger here, this middle finger, and say to an old clergyman like me, old man, take a look at my life, I'm a lot like you. Or maybe they come in carrying their life behind them and dragging it as if it were so much tedious baggage, as if they were so much tedious baggage. Sometimes the stories leave you suspicious. Sometimes they leave you scared. Often they break your heart. One day David came in. David looked to be in his 40s out of work, coughing a lot, and with a story that seemed to have no end. Abuse, abandonment as a child, injury, addiction, disappointments, disasters. I listened to David waiting for him to come to the end of his story. I waited for him to tell me what he thought he needed. We all of us need something. Was it food? Rent money? A bus token? David asked for prayer. So we went together into the sanctuary. And as we came in on this side, he was quite wary as we started to walk down the side of the nave, looking from side to side, looking behind him, above him, almost as if he were expecting to be struck, and we walked slowly to the back of the nave and across the back and down this side and across the front. And every once in a while, we would stop and talk quietly about how he was feeling. And three times we walked around the nave of the church, speaking quietly to one another. I said, David, just walk with me. And we did. And the third time we came to the front of the chancel, and we lit the Christ candle on the communion table. And there we stood, staring together at the tiny, radiant light, looking together at God's firstborn of creation. And David and I prayed. And then we left. But when we got to the door, before he went out, he turned and he looked into that quiet place and he said my mother is not going to believe I did this David was trying to begin again he was trying to start all over again how many times had he tried God only knows to begin again but here he was starting all over which is probably, I suppose, why he thought of his mother at a moment like this. My mother is not going to believe I did this. Have you ever come into a church with your life in your hands, broken wing? Let us pray. O oh God, in the midst of these words, these poor words, may it be that the living word might appear by the impossible arrangements of your grace, appear through these walls and move among us and cause this life to be on again. Amen. In the beginning of his gospel, John tells the story of how people get started with Jesus, how people begin. It's perhaps the simplest of all John's stories. 
And maybe it's the most powerful of all John's stories for anybody who's considering walking in company with our brother Jesus through this life. John says the two people started to, to follow Jesus. One was named Andrew. The other was somebody else. They didn't say anything to Jesus, these two, or they didn't sign on to the Jesus program. They just started to follow. They didn't register on the list of disciples. They just kind of hung around him. Not too close, not too far off. And John says that after a while, Jesus turned and he noticed them following him. 